This is, you know, war and peace as far as history here. This is a lot. So we're T1 on the left, T2 in the middle, enhanced study on the right. Got that? So what do you think this is? Sickle cell, lymphoma, myeloma, TB, brucellosis. Oh, I like this one. Just a good old boy. Oh, yeah. Never meaning no harm. People have said that about me a lot. That's, uh, okay, we got some teaching to do on this one. So uh, um, we can go. Let's go through this. Um, the answer is TB. T the the key feature here is that you have something that is involving multiple bodies, and really, I think the discriminator is this level. Which, if you took this level by itself, you might call this a pyogenic disc space infection. But yet, you have one level that looks like a pyogenic infection. The other levels that look more like metastatic disease, looks very aggressive. So what can give that? And then I, you know, I tried to help out, you know, fever, you know, all this stuff going on. So that it is infectious etiology. Sickle cell, you'd have to go down a couple steps, sure. You'd have to say, well, they're immunocompromised. Maybe they have salmonella, uh, osteo going on. But that seems a bit of a stretch. It's, it gets possible. Lymphoma, you could include, except for this level that looks like a disc space infection. Myeloma, likewise. Brucellosis. I guess possible, but uncommon. You can have a diffuse and focal forms of brucellosis. This would obviously be the diffuse form and can, in some sense, mimic tuberculosis. So I think that's not an unreasonable second choice, but TB is, is the correct answer. Well, let's talk about uh, TB. The following are true concerning TB, except it may spare the disc space with no abnormal increased signal on T2. Preferential involvement of the posterior elements and posterior portions of the bodies. It involves more than two vertebral bodies. It gives large paraspinal soft tissue masses and disc involvement is uncommon. Which is not correct. So we're saying two and five. So uh, let's go through. The answer is going to be disc involvement is uncommon. It's you know common, but they can do look exactly like a pyogenic infection. So it's not going to be classified as uncommon. All these others are true. They can it can spare the disc space. Doesn't have to. It's a great mimic. Again, when you when in doubt, say lymphoma, tuberculosis, and most of the time, you know, you'll be in. Nobody's going to argue with you. Preferential involvement of the posterior elements, absolutely, they can have posterior involvement. You need to look at it, particularly, say, upper cervical spine, C1-2 articulation. Often you get dorsal involvement. More than two vertebral bodies, it tends to skip. You have to really do the whole neuroaxis. If you are lucky enough to know the diagnosis of TB going in, it can be anywhere. There are a lot of skip lesions, classic paraspinal abscesses. So here's a schematic for this. Again, a combination of both disc involvement and an isolated, you call this a disc space infection, other lesions that you might, standing alone, call metastatic disease, and other lesions that just are in the posterior elements. Here's the classic disc level for uh, tuberculosis. It looks sort of like a pyogenic infection, low on T1, bright on T2, abnormal disc, except it extends ventrally, blows up underneath the anterior longitudinal ligament, ligament and takes off the corners of the vertebral body. So very typical for tuberculosis as it kind of creeps up. Pyogenic can do it, but less likely to do it. Most of the time, pyogenic just blows through and you get a lot of you know T2 change, a lot of more phlegmon extending through. And classic paraspinal abscess. In contrast to all these other forms of metastatic disease, which you are well aware with, you know, which does not involve the disc space, prostate metastatic disease, you're not having that epicenter for the abnormality. And perhaps a more important or uh, less obvious pattern to recognize for metastatic disease, which is myeloma. This can be a little tough, this salt and pepper pattern. Again, an important pattern to recognize for metastatic disease. And you know, reasonably specific for myeloma when you see it in the face of multiple compression deformities and, oh, by the way, you know, a more focal plasma cytoma within the spinous process. And you look on the axial views, again, that salt and pepper pattern everywhere.